Welcome to Outreach Programming. I'm Mary Jirasi, and today we have artist and author Cynthia St. James. How you doing, Cynthia? I'm fine. How are you doing? We are honored to have you here. I'm honored to be here. Oddly enough, I would say most of my audience wouldn't, upon sight, recognize you for who you are, but I bet they've seen a lot of your work, that you're the lady behind the art. Yes. On purpose. Yes. <laughs> and you've had fantastic commercial success. Tell me a little about that. We're going to get started with uh, giving you an introduction, then we're going to talk about why Cynthia came to Tampa for um, a piece of artwork that was at the West Tampa Library. So we'll, we'll just kind of give a little background. Why would people recognize your work? And I know they do. I believe they would uh, if they, they read fiction. That would be Terry McMillan's book, uh, her first very successful book, Waiting yes. to Exhale. Yes. Liana, and 60 other book covers? All 60 book covers. 60 book covers, 13 children's books, four, four children's activity books, all over the place. And eight very special cookbooks, which you were generous enough to give me beautiful cookbooks. Yes. And I met uh, Cynthia in Bush Gardens in 1997 for the honorary... Uh, they were honoring her for the first ever Kwanzaa stamp. Kwanzaa is that correct? stamp. It was two days after first issue day. So we originally did it in Los Angeles, and then we got on a plane and came and did it here. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. To um, me, very amazing. Amazing. <laughs> um, not only are you a premier African American artist, you are possibly the premier female African American artist. You're wearing a couple of hats there. Is that correct? Mm, that's kind of uh, tooting my own horn a bit Well, there. I'm tooting the, your horn for you. Is <laughs> okay. that okay? I, I'll say I'm one of them. I've been following your career, but yeah. um, probably the most recognizable work. Your, your work just has such a distinct color scheme and, and wonderful. Right here's uh, uh, little bits and pieces of it with Cynthia. Uh, just finished a stained glass window for the Stanford Library. Is that yes, correct? Yes, yes. My first stained glass design. I'm extremely excited about that. You know, I feel like I've gotten into another field. I keep going, branching out, and what I can do. There's so much to talk about. I think I need to start at the beginning. Originally, I wasn't going to do that. We're going to talk about West Tampa, but um, let's go back a little bit. Okay. How did you get involved in art? When did you get involved in art, and how did it evolve? To pretty recognizable pieces of pretty work in most all of the media. I think, uh, I actually know that since I was five years old, I knew I wanted to be an artist. I knew that. I can't tell you why I knew it. Um, in my teens, I was even more certain of it. An old film, Moulin Rouge, Jose Farrar. Oh, yeah. Um, it was one of my inspirations that in my life I would make it as an artist and not, not make it. The story of Toulouse Lautrec. Right. Who, and all of the French Impressionists. Yeah, who you suffered know, quite a bit in his did. personal life and then excelled in his artwork. Right, right. And wow. then all the Impressionists primarily didn't sell work in their lifetime. Right. It didn't happen until after they passed, and, and a lot of them passed in their 30s. And once again, a commercial success such as yourself, being able to sell in a commercial art venue yes. in your own lifetime. Uh, that, was, that was my goal and uh, yeah. one of my big goals. So I actually am self-taught, and I sold my first painting 36 years ago when I was 20. Wow, yeah, that's incredible. Right. And what was that like, uh, being self-taught? Did you just follow, follow your own intuition? Did the colors come to you? Were you influenced by what you saw? You have such a dis distinct style, and it seems like you stuck with it. Well, you know, it was kind of a, a, it was a journey, because I kept challenging myself to see what I could do. I, I had a whole series of painting wild and domestic animals in the late 70s. I went into painting people realistically in the early 80s landscapes, seascapes, everything. And then I, 20 years ago, came up with my unique style once I knew I could do the other things. You tell me what your unique style is. You were, say, French Impressionist. You have some influences. I can't really define your style myself. You tell me what your style is. The, the, Where does it come from? Where it comes from, really, is the child in me, all the bright, basic, primary colors is what attracts me. Um, it was a simplification of seeing crowds of people in marketplaces beginning to paint them featureless. Um, so I think uh, those two things combine the bright colors and the fact that the people in my paintings are featureless, but what stands out more is my signature. Yeah, I, I feel a little bit of Caribbean influences. Oh, yeah. Mexican with yeah. the geometric, the, the almost shadow-like geometric figures, which are lovely. I love looking at them. Well, you know, for that, what I go back to is a lot of my, my roots and my family, um, both sides, mother and father, were part Cherokee, so that must be the Mexican yeah. side of it. My mom's dad was Haitian. 
Well, yeah. there you so go. So a lot of it is just in the genes. My next show is Psychic Friends Network. <laughs> I was feeling that at Asian. Yeah. Uh, the square, the geometry. Right. I, have, uh, I love that style. And even going to Native American, geometric mm -hmm. shapes and yeah. undefined uh, geometry and uh, beautiful work. It's just such a signature style, though. When you see a Cynthia piece, it's undefinably your piece. Uh, I love your work. So let's get back to West Tampa. You, oh, West Tampa. You have... Um, come to Tampa quite a bit. You were working over at the uh, Home Shopping Network for a little while. Well, what I did was, I'm trying to remember the first time was for a Maybelline uh, commission. That's right. And that original painting ended up in the Museum of African American Art here. I had a special signing of the poster here. That's right. That was my first trip. After that, I Kwanzaa. came. Kwanzaa. Then the Kwanzaa second day issue, four trips to Home Shopping Network, selling work um, on air for MVT Shop. And, and then signing at the bookstore here. Um, it just seems like coming to sign. Well, you need I to mean, buy a condo, right? I need to buy a condo here <laughs> and, and Bush Gardens. When we did that, they gave me free tickets to come back. So I came back and brought my godmother. Oh, and, sweet. You know, so if I've been here, it seems like quite a bit, but I haven't been here in a long time. Yeah. But that's why it's so special to me to have the piece in the library here. Let's talk about the West Tampa okay. library piece. How did this come about? Oh, well, two years ago, I was contacted by Jan Stein, and she actually put the work together for me to do something for public art. And so, therefore, my first stained glass design. So there are three of the, of the windows in the library are actually about... 20 by 48 inches. We have video of those. So yeah. We'll show, the, okay. we'll show the audience that. Right. Um, now, what was it like taking one dimensional work and moving it into th uh, three dimensional pieces? I mean, how did that process go for well, you? Well, for me, I had a little bit of uh, experience before only in that I designed ceramic tile for an airport and also for school. And then I had a chance to design elevator doors for a building. Wow. in Sacramento. So I've gotten used to the fact that I can design something in my head and someone else that knows what they're doing and, and that processing can fabricate it. So how was this design chosen to be the stained glass window piece? I mean, you have, I'm, I'm certain, hundreds of different pieces well, you could have chosen. Well, this is unique. I did it especially for the, I mean, I painted those three paintings especially for this design. So what did you have in mind when you painted them that you knew would transfer into stained glass? I mean, you kind of had to have that in your head. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, I kind of had, well, I knew the colors, what they would look like. I, I felt what they would probably look like, you know, all the brightness and the multicultural aspect of the piece. And then the other part was really um, holding books in high esteem. So that's yes. why I have everyone looking, looking up, up towards the books that are at the very top of, yeah. the, of the windows. As you can see that, um, we'll get some shots of this. There's yeah. the books in the library, and everybody's very uh, reverently looking, looking up, up and almost books. in awe of them. In awe, and all ages. I mean, I Colors. think it's even... Colors. Yes, and the fact that even little babies are going to yeah. the library. I saw the uh, the papooses oh, baby yeah. carried in the papoose. Oh, yes, because the baby's got to go. Baby's got to be there. Right. <laughs> That's so lovely. We'll be looking at some uh, close shots of her work, Cynthia's work. Um, so you collaborated with another artist. So you had two young men cutting, okay. shaping, transferring your work into another medium. Uh, How did I do that? Was that scary? Did you have that to let was, go of some control? Well, and it was, kind of, what was kind it for of, you? That's well, your baby. I had to kind of let go because yeah. even a distance, yeah. I couldn't go check to see what it looked like. Or, but what was very nice about uh, Reggie is that he sent me a box of glass and the colors because I sent them a color chart in addition. Very nice. And some diagrams. So they sent me and had me also pick some of the texture of the glass that would be used that were those colors that I chose. So he involved me even more than I knew I'd be involved. Reggie's phenomenal. He's a third generation. Stained artist, glass, stained I, glass I, I artist. Yeah, yeah, third generation. Uh, yeah. The great craftsmen from Ybor City, the Italians and the um, Spanish came. They were doing a lot of tile work, mm -hmm. a lot of artwork in Ybor, stained glass windows. So that we have had quite a heritage of it here. Well, I'm glad to have finally gotten some stained glass. <laughs> I've been wanting to do stained glass for 12 years. Wow. Consciously so, knowing I wanted to. So this this must have been very exciting to actually be moving in a new direction. This is the start of something big. Yeah, the work is lovely. <laughs> Yeah. And the West Tampa Library, you must be honored as well. It's a phenomenal building. It is a beautiful building. Everybody should just go to, to be inside of it. Yes. As and an extraordinary history. Room. 
as an extraordinary history. Yeah, that, what is it, an old Carnegie yes. historical library? Yes. It's even a, a honor for that reason that it's a historical library. It's a historical building. It has been renovated. It's one of, to me, one of the most lovely buildings that has been uh, revitalized in our community. You know, we have buildings like that everywhere, but meticulous uh -huh. work done on it. Right, and what I love about that room is that's where the children go to read. Yes, right. and children love colors, and right. you've got babies in papooses, you've got young papooses, <laughs> your Native American culture. <laughs> yes, it comes out. Right. And um, yeah, the light's coming in. Um, so what's what's new for you next? It sounds like you've, you've tapped into the commercial market, you've had mm -hmm. commercial successes, uh, you're moving into new directions. Uh, what are some of your goals? It sounds like you can literally keep painting and working forever. You're just keep that's exactly going what forward. I want, <clears throat> that's exactly what I want to do. I want to be able to do more uh, stained glass design for architects and interior designers and people that own their homes and say, well, this, I want one window done or something like that. I want to move in that direction. Um, I'm collaborating with another artist, Charles Bibbs, on a whole collaboration of us two working on paintings together. And what's that going to be like? Well, there's a couple pieces out already. Our first piece together was called Precious, and we made it into a limited edition print, which sold out within a few months. What is the collaboration? What does he do? Well, what let's do you say, do? How does that work as a collaborative? Okay, I paint first, acrylic on canvas, and he's more uh, pen and ink and very minute textured and that sort of thing. So he, he'll say this, he'll come in and embellish it so it's also his painting. Nice. It might have his signature piece if it's a woman, like in Medicine Woman. Sure. Um, she's holding her, he's, she's holding hands. I've but seen that. His signature is the hands, yeah. big strong hands of, yes. women, of women, you know. Yes. So we're uh, doing that. That's uh, interesting. Yeah. How, do, how does that happen? I mean, to me it sounds like there has to be um, a lot of generosity on your behalf. Well, there has to be a little letting go and a giving lot your baby to go. somebody else. Because we'll huh? the painting is finished when yeah. I hand it to him. So he basically does his own he, thing. He asked to start this process years ago, yeah. and then when he got it, it was scared him to death to <sighs> even touch it. Yeah. You know, but he went on and did it. That and must like be I difficult said, yeah. to take someone's baby and transfer it or touch it or transmogrify it. I, right. I'd be hesitant because I know how truly passionate and protective artists are about their work. Well, you know, if I let him, really, a lot of trust there yeah. and a lot of letting go. It says a lot about you. <laughs> For him, anyway. I don't know, I don't know about I anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could be as generous. <laughs> You're doing what to my baby? I think I'd feel a little trepidation. You know, looking over his shoulder all yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah. No, 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 not like that. <laughs> But we're going to actually come out with a calendar of collaborations of 12 pieces. Well, I would love to see right. that. We'll have to have you back. You're right. Yeah. Your work is phenomenal. Um, how does it feel to be you? When you, you go out to the airport, you've got uh, a mural in Ontario mm -hmm. airport. Uh, tell me the Taco Bell story. I think it's funny. You're, you, oh. you snuck in. Yeah. Well, your work behind your own back. You had no idea. I had no idea. A friend of mine called me and said, you know, they're, they're showing your, your mural at Ontario Airport, and it's a Taco Bell commercial, <laughs> and he's dressed in a suit, and he's walking in the airport, and it's Ontario, California yeah. Airport, and in the background, you're seeing that, you did, know. How did you feel? I mean, was it? Well, it was, uh, I, at first, I thought he was hallucinating that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or something just looked like mine. I said, yeah. okay, 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 you know. Yeah. It's the same way I felt um, when someone told me to listen to or look at um, Jeopardy. And that my name was part of Final Jeopardy College Jeopardy tournament. Wow. <laughs> well, what is that like? You seem very modest. You seem like a very well, modest I, but person. But I really am. I, you are. You are. To me, it's like everything that happens is amazing that it happens. And then I'm, I'm always looking at what can happen next. What can I do now? And but it, I it love still what blows I do. you away, huh? Oh, it blows me away. It blows me away that people know my name. Jeopardy. Now that you know, uh, yeah. you, you've hit home as an artist when you're on Jeopardy. <laughs> right. Rodin and Cynthia James. <laughs> awesome. That was really something because wow. I had just started to go out doing public speaking. I had not done that, and now that's being pushed a lot for me to do that. And I'm going out, and that first day that I'm going to speak, I'm speaking in front of educators, art educators, California art educators. You have to go back to the fact I'm self-taught. Right. Okay. What is that about? Right. Huh? And so the night before Final Jeopardy aired, <laughs> and so they introduced me as being on Final Jeopardy. Oh, how funny. You know, so all of a sudden I felt less nervous yes. at speaking. I'd like to buy an S for Cynthia St. James, please. <laughs> oh, that's fun. That, and you're part of the mainstream. Yeah, well. And not and, many artists are. No, and the fact that. In their own lifetime. Yeah. 
and that all the college students got the answer correct. Wow. Wow. So you know, you, so yeah. it's amazing. Your art seems to be reaching many people on many levels. And yeah. like I said, definitively, when you see it, you know it's your work. Um, we were talking about the future and um, other things going on. I wanted to talk about your being self-taught. Um, you're dealing with artists, art educators, art students. What can you tell somebody in our audience about being self-taught? Maybe another five-year-old child, uh, someone has a daughter that is painting and drawing and painting and drawing. What would you say to other people about being self-taught? Can you do it? How can hmm. you do it? Would you suggest doing it? How did you do that? To me, that's phenomenal, to become this successful having been a self-taught yeah. artist. Well, you know what? I'm going to say a couple of things. One of the things that I found through some of my friends when I was younger that I was really a little envious of them because they did get a chance to major in art and go to art school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this doesn't always happen, so don't misunderstand. Right. But not one of them paints or does anything in art for a living. Wow. You know, um, I, a couple of them I asked about that, and it became a grade. There's something about becoming a grade, and, and that's my concern when I spoke to educators, is that maybe it shouldn't be graded. If someone's taking art, how, are yeah, you gonna, so how, how can you grade it? Because is it more like right, yours or right. somebody else is better or, yeah. you know, that sort of thing? And with the children and, and the lack of a lot of art classes and any kind of... They're getting cut left everything and right now. Everything's getting no cut. Funding. It's just like encouraging that, just as you would encourage physical education is all about what the brain and body needs. You know, um, so I would say, like, for the children, for the parents to set aside time for them to do that, too, yeah. if that's what they like to do, as long as they do their other homework. Right. Do something like that. But encourage them, but buy encourage them some products if you can. Yeah. Get the crayons, get the paints right. when you can. Right, and, and don't discourage them. Yeah. But just know, let them know they need to have a backup. They How did backup. that work with your family? You're five years old, you want to be an artist. Did you tell your mom? Did she support you? Did your family think you were nuts? Well, I mean, well my family... Nobody wants an artist in the family, right? <laughs> no, you ain't. My, You're not going to oh, make any money, no, right? No, no, mine was this, you know, continue through college, take liberal arts, yeah. you know, and, and then... When you in your summers, when you're not teaching, because you're going to become a teacher. Oh, you're going to become a teacher. And during the summer, you paint. Oh, uh, so your parents had it all planned out for you. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to be a teacher and during the summer. Now, now, see, that doesn't even work now because school is all year round. This is true. Right, and then I interviewed some people at um, not as an interviewer, but sure. as a. I worked at Disney Studios for a, a while. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, I, I worked there for a while. As an animator. They wanted to bring me into animation, oh, but I was actually, yeah. that was during my wild and domestic animal period. Oh, so yeah. I was in educational media part time, wow. and I was painting at home, you know, just trying to live that way for a while. And I really wanted to go into animation, but I interviewed some of the animators, and none of them painted or did art anymore outside of the job. Oh, See, so yeah. I found out that that became their eight to five. And they lost it and then as they their lost own passion. As their own passion. So that's why I never took it as a job. But I would love to do animation. I would love to have some of my work animated, to yeah. put it that way, or learn some more about that. Wow, you're but I just, just always evolving. Yeah. <laughs> that's nice. I yeah, mean, but I didn't want to do that path. Yeah. I didn't want to do that eight to five, clock in, yeah. clock out, and then lose something. Yeah, I think that happens yeah. with creative people. It's their passion. They've done it all their lives. As soon as it becomes a job, it, it starts to get a little painful. Yes, yeah. Uh, I don't feel good today. I don't feel inspired. Okay, crank it out. We've got a movie to make out. by next You've got to clock in, clock out. And yeah. for me, I've been able to, um, for years, I even supported myself with my own tax business. You know? Boy, you're just, I'm just a, doing what just, you got to do to just stay because, painting. Right. But I always kept it separate. Yeah. So it's amazing to me now that between the writing and the, and the painting and the designing, it's the full time. Wow. You know, it's my full but time. But on your terms. On my terms, and then sometimes I, I feel like it's a treat when I get to paint. So you're self-employed, so don't fire your boss, right? Right. You can't get mad at the boss. <laughs> you can. You know, i got to get vacation from that boss. That's right. you got to make sure she pays you. you got to treat her right. <laughs> yeah. um, what does your family say now? They wanted you to be a school teacher. They gingerly supported you, obviously. Nobody shut yeah. you down. No. Nobody took your art process away. But... Uh, do they think it's phenomenal that you're actually a very successful, self-supported artist in your own lifetime? Proud peacocks. That's what they are, proud peacocks. You know, and uh, sometimes when, uh, in the very beginning, when they, like my dad didn't particularly show it in the beginning, but I found out little things he did, like go sit in this building because my paintings were there. Wow. Just would go sit in that building. Wow. You know, so. So subtle support. Subtle support. Spiritual and, support. Yeah, and uh, 
those little bags of the cheese and the tuna and stuff yeah. when it was really starving artist time. Yeah. Mom used to get some of that stuff together and make sure I had it. Wow. You know, even some of the people on the job used to bring me little care packages. <laughs> one, of the, one of the women, would, her husband, an Italian, used to cook bread, fresh bread. Oh, they used to bring me bread sweet. and whatever. So, technically, it takes a village to raise an artist. Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. I, I don't say that flippantly. No, seriously. You had a lot of support. A lot of support. Yeah. yeah. Uh, people must just be delighted to see your success. Yes. Like I said, peacocks. Yeah. Yeah. And your friends, and um, today, looking at you today, 36 years of uh, uh -huh. being a, a successful artist now, mm -hmm. uh, what continues to be your inspiration? Are you, is your inspiration changing? Are you seeing things differently? Are you incorporating things? As we age, I know we mm -hmm. start to see the world with different eyes. What is your, what remains your inspiration? Has it changed? Are you looking for new inspirations as you seem to be evolving into mm -hmm. all sorts of different uh, genres with your work, animation, stained glass, it sounds mm -hmm. like you're not stuck. No, there's a, I'm calling it Seascapes Revisited. In my early years before I had even people in any of my paintings, I used to do landscapes and seascapes. Nice. So I've been doing that a lot and suddenly I'm getting these commissions to do exact size seascapes for homes. Like wow. One was like 22 by 54 inches to go up, you know, Fireplace over fireplace. Right. One's 42 by 48 as you come into the entrance. Wow! So it's huge. almost yeah. So it's almost like part of architect and designing because it's really becoming a focal part of someone's home. Right. That kind of thing. I'm always intrigued by cultures of the world, and uh, one grandmother was Cherokee and German Jew. Oh my so gosh. I have so, <laughs> so I've started this Obey, Hasidic. Oy vey, shalom, uh, <laughs> namaste. You know, right. what do you say to grandma, right? You can right, say it all. Right. So I've actually has started a little bit on Hasidic Jewish uh, culture. Yeah. And yeah. even though there's just black and white, the prayer shawls are phenomenal. Right. And movement. But folks and people yeah. coming and going yeah. and energy, a lot of energy. Right. So. So it's the seascapes all the way to constantly wow. being intrigued with cultures. There's a, I've gone back to this Hugh Masekela uh, compilation CD of some of his best music, and there's a song I love on this thing. Um, and I'm actually not only going to do something with dance with a friend of mine that's a choreographer, I'm going to co-choreograph something with him, but I'm going to paint it because I keep hearing it and seeing it in my head. And it's a song. So you're going to paint your interpretation of the song. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Now, am I wrong or right? Was there an actual interpretation, dance interpretation of an art? Have you, have you seen the show where they actually took paintings from an African-American male artist? Please forgive me, I forgot his name. Ah, oh, Jonathan Green. Right, and they came right. out of the artwork and he that's did dance interpretation to that. That's incredible to me. Yeah. I mean, I would love to have something like that happen. Um, so, and seeing this co choreography with this friend of mine, Kenny Long, I see even the back you know, I see the, because the, there's movement, they're walking to the village. Right. I see the backdrop even as art. Yes. You know. Um, so you see art everywhere. I see art you everywhere. You see it moving, you hear it in sound. <laughs> yes. You, it just, it, to me, it sounds like uh, all five of your senses are just finely tuned into making it, some art out of it. I mean, I just see my dolphins in the morning a lot of times when I walk the beach. Oh, and that, that's inspiring. I mean, there's so much inspiration. So that's the one thing that I'll never have is artist block. Yeah, it's not a like writer's block, but I'm not, <laughs> not, not, not artist block. Tell me about your writing. We haven't even touched upon it. Like I said, we oh, could be talking God. for the next two hours. I know. For my art, let me see. For what, your writing? My writing? Okay, children's books. Right. Out right, of right. 13, I wrote three of them as well as illustrated wow. them. The other ones were I co-authored. Um, I've done a poetry and prose books, a couple, a uh, cookbook. Um, I started work uh, for some time ago on art marketing, an uh, art marketing book for artists. Wow. So yeah. but, but more like my experiences and when yeah. I learn from my mistakes. Kind of a little mentorship. Yeah, kind of like that, And because I've done some art marketing seminars. Right. And, uh, and you, you've successfully marketed your work on yeah, the and, Home Shopping Network. Yeah, but me, not even though I'm marketing. Sometimes yeah. I never th I've never thought of myself as a marketer. Yeah. You're self-taught in almost everything. It sounds like you have a very good success rate of moving into arenas and exploring and being open-minded to things. Yeah, I'm, I'm open for sure, receptive to. Where did your um, idea for the children's books come from? They're, they're gorgeous. And, and oh. what was your connection to children as, as an author and an artist in the book series Well, that was something 
back to the book cover, Terry McMillan's Waiting to Exhale. Right. The same company got in touch with me and said, have I ever thought about doing children's books? Really? And it was all because of the bright colors. Yeah. And, and I never really had thought about illustrating children's books. And, but I wanted to learn to do it, so that's how I ended up into it. Then I got all wow. jazzed about it. <laughs> I couldn't stop. <laughs> then, yeah, then I sent out and let all the publishers know I was doing wow. this. And so in the first year, I had three contracts to do children's books. Then I realized three is too much in one year. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's better to learn three is too much than zero <laughs> is nothing. nothing. <laughs> and I have no money, and I bombed. Right. You, right. you have success of being successful, it sounds like. <laughs> Must be that Native American car. Oh, yeah, so something coming on here, you know. Yeah. Right. You're yeah. guided by the spirits. And I mean that as an artist. I mean, it's in your colors. And um, it's amazing how you've just integrated your own culture, your own heritage, everything you see. You're interested in incorporating dance motion. You're interested in incorporating music motion. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you have such a nice conduit to everything in this universe the colors, the vibrations, the animals. Like, it's, it's, we it's, could just keep talking yeah, here. You've it, got it, it all. It just really feels like all. spirit to me, really. Yeah, yeah. I sense that about you. Yeah. And it's um, not often that I feel people can just incorporate that vibration and that sense and that fascination. Mm -hmm. Are you childlike in many I'm ways? Is that what I'm very much a reading? kid. I am very much a kid. And, it's and I'm in a candy store. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all I do is eat the candy. That's how I got this big. Obviously, she's petite. I'm extra large. I can't even believe this interview is coming to an end. Oh, me either. I feel like this we could fun. just keep talking. It has been fun. I'm going to have to call you. Yeah, let's hang out. <laughs> Lunch on me. Right. Um, thank you for joining us. We're going to uh, let Cynthia have the last word here. Um, tell us what's next, where you're going, and uh, what's going to go be going on in the next uh, Ooh, end of the year. I'm exhibiting. I have not had a uh, one-woman exhibit in New York in 15 years. Wow. And end of October, I have one. Oh, uh, October? Manhattan. Where where will you be? It's going to be at the Flat Tool. I can't even pronounce it. F L A T O T E L. It's a hotel on 52nd Street in Manhattan. 52nd, because I'm going to go. Okay, to it's October the 22nd, 23rd. Good. And then I'm going to also do something similar in Michigan, in Southfield, Michigan. I'm going as a speaker, but I'm also going to raise funds for a nonprofit by selling artwork. Wow. Yeah. You know, you were a phenomenal guest and a phenomenal artist. I'm oh, honored to you, have Mary. you <laughs> on the show. Thanks for your time. Thank you for the pleasant surprise. And I hate to say continued success because she's all about success. I need more, though. <laughs> you need more. I'll give her some of mine, right? No, just teasing. Anyway, thanks for joining us and joining Cynthia St. James on today's show. Keep watching television.